Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial for Max for Live. Uh, I'm Eric here, your host at Learn Max, or something cheesy like that. Uh, anyway, okay, so what we're gonna look at tonight is uh, kind of a work in progress uh, toy synth I've got going here called uh, Add Morph. Um, and as you guys know, uh, or, or might know if you've seen some of my tutorials, I really like stuff that's modulated. I like stuff that's, you know, got some motion to it. I like sounds that are kind of, you know, some some interesting stuff going on. Uh, it's sort of like a lot of wobble bass and kind of modulated filters and stuff. And I like this idea of morphing waveforms and spectrums and so on. And so that's what I have kind of going on in my uh, add morph synth here now. So let me uh, explain a little bit as to what's going on. Okay. So this is a Max for Live window. We'll just look at the interface for a second here. And you'll notice uh, basically a bunch of um, multi sliders, which allow you to set up sort of a spectrum. And uh, the first two here, you'll also notice I have these kind of uh, these other sliders with dials that uh, control the rate at which a particular spectrum is sort of added into the sound. You can see right now I've got uh, one here, one here. Let me uh, set that down. Like set the first one to nothing, set the second down to nothing. Now the third one is a special spectrum. And this one is a constant spectrum, sort of, okay? Um, you'll see as I change the spectrum here, there is a little bit uh, kind of weird behavior going on. And what that's doing, now first off, uh, I have this set up so that all the spectrum get normalized. And what that means is that all of the individual components, all the individual frequency components get scaled so that they all add up to one, okay? so. Basically, if you took this one plus this one plus this one plus this one, the coefficients, and add them all together, they should come out to be one. And uh, as you add in more, or you move them around, it renormalizes. This way, it keeps the uh, the power uh, of the of the waveform, you know, to a, a fairly constant value. So you don't wind up with like you know blowing out. So uh, you can see like right now, no matter what I do, as I add things in, even if I kind of crank everything up. I don't kind of, you know, blow things out. It's kind of fun. I can kind of interactively paint in the spectrum as things go on here. And like I said, this one here, the one that's all the way to the right, is uh, sort of the constant one. It's not modulated, uh, other than by being modulated by the fact that I'm adding in components, it's going to normalize everything in before it puts it into the actual spectrum. Okay. So that gives us kind of the overall uh, wave here, and, and the, what's, what this is doing, basically I have a, a bunch of sine waves that get added together, and each one of these bars uh, is the uh, the amplitude of the, the uh, uh, yeah, the uh, overall intensity of that particular sine wave. And in here, you'll see, now I can add a spectrum that is added in according to the frequency that I kind of set up here. Okay, and it renormalizes, so everything kind of shifts up and down to add in those guys, and then also to make sure that everything adds up to one again. So we get this kind of nice, fun morphing effect going on, and we have two of those, so we can... So why do you want two of them? Well, so you can do them at different rates. Kind of cool. And what is really interesting is when you start to add in some other effects on top. This is a really simple patch right now. Um, let me save that. I have a little preset thing in here. So I have presets. But in and of themselves, these guys don't have any filtering or much in the way of envelopes. Uh, the only envelope is really kind of generated by this, um, you know, the modulating of the, uh, of the spectrum there. I like to add some external uh, filter effects, things like that. It's kind of cool to check this out. Or you can add a little redux in. So it's a kind of cool sound. It's got a lot of uh, modulation going on. So let's take a look inside my Max patch. Okay. Here's the patch, and I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, kind of recenter them here. And this is in the presentation view that's opened up here, so I'll pop back into patching mode. And it's a little bit ugly right now, I gotta apologize. It's a little crazy. Um, you know, it started off uh, real simple in that 
I had, uh, you know, just a single pair of these guys morphing uh, around and, and I started adding another one and another one. It got a little, little out of hand maybe, but oh, what the heck, right? Okay, so let's take a quick look as to what's going on. So we have these multi-sliders and they're the things that uh, really let me uh, establish what the spectrum is. See here, okay, you know, as things kind of morph around and move, you'll see that behaving on here just as it was in the other patch or in the actual presentation mode. Okay, so let's see, I don't want to spend an awful lot of time in here because I know you guys are in a hurry uh, to move on to your next YouTube video or something like that. So uh, we'll cover kind of the, some of the high points. Okay, um, basically the, the, the meat of it is down here in this os oscillator bank, OSC bank tilde. Um, and if you are familiar, or if you want to look at another synth that comes with Max for Live, it's called Additive Heaven. Uh, it's one of the built-ins, and it allows you to basically add in sine waves. You know, it's, this is an additive synth as opposed to a subtractive synth, where it's all based on, you know, a subtractive synth means you put in a waveform, and then you have filters that allow you to shape things. These are additive synths in that you are adding together sine waves or adding together waves to kind of create the kind of interesting character to the, uh, to the thing. So something like this, or an FM synth, or... Um, you know, that's, that's a additive synth. So, okay. So we have this oscillator bank and, uh, I set it up in such a way that I have up to, what is it? 16, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, I think I have 16, uh, oscillators in my bank. And, uh, basically, you know, you can look up OSC bank, uh, you know, click on that control H a non-interpolating oscillator bank. Uh, you can kind of see what's going on, the magnitude, phase, index, frequency, and so on. Uh, I'm going to let you kind of check out OSC Bank to get all the details on there. So I'll just show you kind of what I'm doing. All right. So OSC Bank uh, creates a sine wave at each of these uh, frequencies that I set up here. See this 77.5, 155, etc. Okay, so that's the set of 16 frequencies. Okay, how did that get set up? All right, got to look in here real quick. All right, starting at the top, MIDI comes in goes into a parser. This first part pulls out node ons and node offs. Okay. Unpacks that. I get a, uh, a MIDI free, a MIDI value that gets sent to MIDI to frequency and the velocity gets pulled out here. And that gives me a multiplier later on. So I can get uh, a little bit of velocity sensitivity. Uh, you've seen me do that in other patches. If you haven't, uh, tune in one of my other, you know, simple, simple building patches. So, okay. So the frequent the MIDI note value comes in here. Uh, gets turned into a frequency that comes over here and takes this array of numbers 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 15 and uses this thing called a vector expression. A vector expression similar to a regular expression except it works on a vector. This is a vector here, this list of integers, uh, a list of numbers is a vector. You can look that up even Wikipedia. They, they talk about vectors, vectors versus scalars. A scalar is a single value. A vector is a set of values like that. Okay. Now I'm using this vector expression in scalar mode, which allows me to basically take all these numbers and in one shot, I multiply them by uh, another number. Okay. So that MIDI to frequency gives me the base frequency for the note I just played. It multiplies it by all of these. So I get the basically the uh, frequencies of all the harmonics that I want to then use for this sound, for this particular key. Okay, so you'll see as I press notes, say I press A, 110, 220, 440, these are all multiples of the frequency of that, right? A is 440. If you've never heard of, you know, concert tuning A, it's 440. So I'm, at, I'm actually uh, two octaves below there. Excuse me. Okay, so that's where my frequency information comes from. And then the amplitude for each of those frequencies, the amplitude for each of those, uh, um, yeah, those oscillators comes from my little uh, scalars here, or excuse me, my little uh, multi, multi sliders here. So they all get sent in. And you'll see I also have these vector expressions up here that allow me to take the values that are coming in from these faders that are being modulated by phasers. Okay, a phaser is basically a ramp that drives uh, it sends an audio signal or an audio rate signal out, drives this cycle, which is just a sine wave. Okay, so that comes in here. Uh, it divides it into a, a range that I want to use. This is going up and down, and that gets multiplied by this spectrum. So what's happening is I'm multiplying that by a number from zero to one. In this case, I think I've scaled that way, so that 
uh, at zero, you're adding none of this spectrum in, and at one, you're adding the whole spectrum in. Okay, kind of get that? So you're just kind of modulating up and down. The frequency is set by this dial. It runs the phaser, runs the cycle, etc., etc. Okay, all runs through. I have a little gate here. Okay, the reason I have that gate there is what happens if I set this dial to zero, it stops driving the gate. So then I can use this as just a regular slider and I can mix things in and out. I don't have the phaser and the cycle and all that kind of forcing it to go up and down. Ready? Watch this. Hold down control, turn that to zero, the gate turns off, and now I can use this as a normal slider. If I don't have that, if I set it to say a value, I can't grab it and move it around because it's being driven by all this. Okay. So if I didn't have my gate, what would happen is still it would be sending out a signal and it wouldn't let me, you know, change it up and down. So that's why that's there. Okay. <sighs> Lot to let's see. All right, so there's one of those for each one so that I can modulate them. And this stuff over here is the same as it was over there. Okay, so they happen. Uh, I get a, a vector expression. That creates yet another list out of the two of them. Here I have a vector expression that adds the two together and adds the third one in as well, which is my fixed frequency, excuse me, my fixed spectrum over here. So this vector expression takes multi-slider one, multi-slider two, multi-slider three, adds them all together. Okay, so then I get values that are potentially going from zero to three for each of the uh, each of the oscillators, and then I use a bit of JavaScript here. Okay, I did that in one of my other tutorials. If I double click on that, uh, you'll see JS. I have a normalize function. Okay, so what's going on? To normalize here. This is where I make sure that all my the magnitude uh, of, of all my values gets scaled so that they all add up to one. Okay. Uh, look up normalize. You can also find some information about that on the web. Uh, basically, it calls for dividing each of the components by the length of the vector. And we get the length of the vector by squaring each of the components, adding those together, and then taking the square root of it. That's what normalizing is about. So I do a little bit of array manipulation here in JavaScript just because I can, and uh, it's kind of more straightforward to me as a, as a kind of linear traditional programming guy. So that's what's going on there. Take a good look, stare at that. Okay, we can talk about that more later, or maybe in another tutorial because I've been rambling on and on. So okay, they all get normalized. This is the new result, this spectrum down here, okay? That runs through another vector expression, which is the guy that scales it, scales the whole thing according to the velocity that came in. I do a little bit of scaling and cheating over here to kind of make it, instead of going from zero to one, it goes from like 0.5 uh, to one. Uh, but let's zero us through in case of node offs. Okay, but anyway, so okay, scales that. Uh, and then it has to take these 16 amplitudes and these 16 frequencies, def uh, uh, combine them, interlace them, or lace them together using the ZL, the Ziccarelli list. Okay, it has to put like value 110 with an amplitude, value 220 with an amplitude, and so on. Prepends set on that guy and sends that to my oscillator bank. Now, let me show you kind of what's going on. I'll a little message box over here. You can see what's kind of going on on some of these things. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Okay. Set. There's my frequency. There's the value. You can see when it turns off. Okay. So nothing is being sent to the sub, the first frequency, but then the rest have some some nice values. Okay, that's always a good a good thing to use. You know, use a message box. You, you set that you can get easy way out. Okay, so that's what uh, feeds my oscillator bank, sets everything up, and then I just use plug out, and I get sound. So it's a fun synth. Um, I didn't go into all the details here. So hopefully, you've checked out some of my other tutorials. You also notice I threw a little uh, uh, preset object in here. That's really easy. Just you know, throw a preset in, and that allows me to. And I don't want to save this. Don't save. Um, that just basically gives me this kind of preset functionality here. Okay. So anyway, uh, this isn't a finished synth. It's really just to get you thinking, see some of the things, ways you can kind of uh, do something that's uh, a little different than your typical, create a uh, sawtooth wave and throw it through a filter, you know, some other sound generating techniques. And uh, it gives me a chance to ramble on and on a little bit. And, you know, send, so then, uh, you know, if you like this, comment. Uh, rate, subscribe, uh, let me know, do you want to see, you know, more synths, you know, take this in some different directions or, you know, go more traditional uh, subtractive synth stuff or wherever. But anyway, okay, hopefully it inspired you. Uh, happy patching. Remember, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.